This is genius. This is Joe Rogan, and you're listening to The Gritty Bowman. I've never seen so many mullets in my life. No, it's just about feeling good. You, you had more chins than a Chinese phone book for I a while. Man. Yeah, it, it was, was bad. bad. Yeah. I mean, he's right. he said, Goonies never say die. <laughs> We're going. We got this. All right. <laughs> I was pulling the trigger, but the safety was on. <laughs> I just Randy Black Not Eagle. Randy that's Black it. Eagle. Boom. That's that's my. That's how we roll. Just drop the <laughs> mic and walk away. Cheryl, who names her kid Cheryl? <laughs> Same person that names him Sue. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody wants to get finally to where they're planning on getting to to then spend half the day setting up camp. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I really appreciate this product is because it's just so darn redneck. You know, it's like... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I am proud. At night when you get back, it literally takes 24 seconds to unbuckle the three buckles and get in the 24 seconds. Not 30. <laughs> not, 24 and not, seconds. And, you d and I didn't say 25. <laughs> okay? Uh, I'm just going to surprise kick you with questions you oh, can start okay. it but he just takes over anyway that's right. anyway, so just let him start it to, that's right it's just Thank brian you, you know he's got a, he's here we go on everything all right folks welcome to the gritty bowman podcast and the uh gritty angler podcast because i'm here with mm -hmm. my my buddy chad nelson from gritty angler yeah and we're in chad's cabin up here Sas saskatchewan canada that's right that's right it's a beautiful beautiful place by a reservoir and um, it's beautiful here. It's actually no, Utah. We're not in Saskatchewan. Yeah. We're in, this is Strawberry? Strawberry Reservoir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not far from Park City, which we went and checked out earlier. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Utah's pretty cool. But we are joined by the guys from Canvas Cutter. Um, and uh, for all you guys that whine about product podcasts, just so you know, I'm not paid by Canvas Cutter. Uh, he's not, I can I'm, guarantee I'm that. I'm not paid by can Actually, it's just a cool product that, uh, I've been seeing online and stuff. And then we met and I was mm -hmm. like, man, I'm, I'm really interested in learning about it. So for you whiners who don't want to be part of a product podcast, you might want to turn off the podcast now. But for those of you who might be interested in a cool product, here's your chance. So, so our um, guests are Seth and Cheryl. Yep. Founders, yep. owners of Canvas Cutter. Larson. Yeah. Larson, yeah. So, Cheryl, uh, it's uh, kind of, we talked about this <laughs> offline. I asked him, so, uh, who names their kid Cheryl? And he said, the same guy that names him Sue. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't help but think of uh, Johnny Cash. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. uh, but, um, so, this product, before we get into that, um, you know, Canvas Cutter, where did that name come from? That's a good question. Uh, I was thinking of what to name it, and I mainly work with Canvas, and it was my wife that came up with it. She said, oh, you ought to call it Canvas Cutter, and so, I don't know, it's sort of stuck with me, and okay. that's where it came about. We were just thinking This of whole name. thing's a long, a long it's journey. It's kind of a cool logo, cool, you know, like... Kind of? Brian... It's I mean, dang cool. it's, dude, it's, who you. came up Fricky. with the logo? Brad. A neighbor of ours did. Lane <laughs> Kim, he, he does graphic design, photography. He's an awesome guy. We had him working on logos. It took a while, but we finally got this one. And just I knew that was it. There was, you know, everybody does like mountains or, sorry, those of you who do mountains, or or like, <laughs> like horns. horns. Everybody does a, a horn. And, right. <laughs> We wanted something that could fit in a lo a large spectrum. Yep. Um, Dude, this was it. I like it. Canvas cutter. So yeah. it seems like you guys just blew up in the last six months, a year. At least that's when I became aware of you guys. How long have you been around? Well, we've actually only been doing this for about six months, seven so, months. Okay. Show off. So here's the thing. Like I drive around in a truck, and Aaron and I have talked about this a lot. Aaron makes fun of me because... I refuse to go to a hotel if it can at all be avoided. I'm proud of you. And I like to just sleep in the back of my truck on my little thermorest pad and my, oh my featherweight light cot or any other cot. I pop it up and I, and I sleep in the back of the truck and, uh, I sleep in the back of my truck a lot. So, uh, naturally, um, when I saw this product, I was like, 
wait a minute, this would be awesome. It's a, for me. I tag game changer in it, and he, <laughs> I, I mean that. Like, and I chad, tag you know change your life because it really will. <laughs> it really is a big deal if if people just you know had an opportunity to try it out or or to see the vision of it. I think. So, so for those so basically, listening, explain it. it. It's yeah. like a it's like a bedroll in the yeah. back of your. You just yep. carry it around with your car, your vehicle, your yep, truck. You can throw it in the back of your truck. It's got a, a pad, a sleeping bag in it. It's a canvas cutter that you. It's a canvas cutter bedroll that you just. It's made out of canvas, mm-hmm. but it's not your typical canvas. Most canvas, traditional canvas, is waterproof because when it gets wet, it yeah. swells. So it's got treatments on the outside. But this is a Mold marine resistant. canvas. Yes, it's mildew resistant. It's it's waterproof, not just because it swells, but mm-hmm. it, it actually has been treated. And uh, it zips all the way cl- So yours way is waterproof. Waterproof. It zips all the way close. Most bedrolls that people buy or use just flap close or they're open-ended, mm-hmm. which kind of – it pretty much defeats the purpose. You might as well just throw out because if it rains – yeah. Or if bugs or rodents are around, they still get in your stuff. Where this zips all the way closed, it's waterproof. The way the way he he the canvas cutter Sheryl. designed it, Sheryl designed it, is the water just runs off with the seams and everything over the 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 reason why we don't say waterproof is because the zipper we use mm-hmm. isn't it's not a waterproof zipper because nobody likes zipper problems and mm-hmm. so. We we use a, a military grade zipper. It's really heavy duty. It's rugged. Yeah, he he's made them for seventeen years and seventeen like years call, we haven't had a zipper come back. I like to call stuff like that gritty. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Gritty. it's very gritty. It is gritty. But it's you gritty also gear. have an awning like uh, over your head, so you can uh, you got yeah. Some we head just came out with that. Yeah, it's a pull system to where there's a mat that you lay underneath your pad. And we have two aluminum poles that go in that, and it, it holds it off. Because some people are claustrophobic or don't want the canvas on you. And if it was raining or snowing, mm-hmm. the canvas would be cold. And this kind of holds it off you. It can create like a little pocket, heat pocket. It's so. kind of like a, um, a, what do you call it, bivy sack. Bivy. Yeah, yeah. It, it's similar to a bivy, but there are differences. And I have a... Like that, I'm not going to backpack with. No, no. And <laughs> no. we are no, and we, we no. don't expect... Yeah, it's not for backpacking. It's a car camping. It's for deal. the large majority of hunters and anglers that have a base camp or they're going over the weekend. I mean, we've slept in them for. When I had an elk tag down in southern Utah, he pretty much stayed in his canvas cutter for. You were down there for a month at least scouting and stuff. So, wow. so you, you know what it reminds can. me of though is like the old timey, uh, you know, horse cowboy yeah, going across the, oh, yeah, yeah. the plains or whatever and their mule and they got this canvas bed roll with exactly. all their stuff in it and they roll it out and they sleep in it wherever they're at and they roll it back up and they ride Dude, on I, traditionally that's where it comes from i yeah. love my canvas sleeping bag the I thing mean, is is it's really comfy it's so comfy not light like you said you're not going to pack with it but what does that weigh, by the way? Anyways, the the cover is seven seven and a half pounds, and the the niner, a smaller one. Well, this is the niner, is seven pounds. But we're working on some. The some thing other too things. cool about them is, is <clears throat> like when I'm home, I just leave all my gear in there. So when you get ready to go, yep. you don't have to look for your pad. You don't yep. have to look for your sleep bag. I don't know how many people out there. I know I used to do it. Oh, I forgot my pillow, or oh, mm-hmm. I forgot this. Well, when I get home, it's all there. So you just grab it, go. You don't have to worry about your gear; it's there. Right. And since you aren't worried about size or weight with it, I mean, you can be. It, it can roll if you put an air pad in it and a down sleeping bag. It will roll up really small. But why? Yeah. Like if you're going to throw it in the back of a truck or a car, you why? don't need to go light. Yep. Why yeah. not have a three-inch foam pad where you're going to sleep in heaven all Dude. night long and wake up? Sleep is so important, and people underplay that all the time. If you're out on a hunt for weeks at a time or if you're out on a fishing trip, the trip's a whole lot better if you're sleeping good. And not just that. I'm oh, all it's, about it's crucial. I'm yeah. all, Dude, this is a guy, and this is no lie, from like age 12 to graduating from high school. I slept 
in a sleeping bag on top of my made bed. So I wouldn't have to make my bed. <laughs> I want. I pulled it out from under the bed. I climbed in. I went to bed. I woke up in the morning and shoved it under my bed. Plus, awesome. sleeping bags feel awesome when they're thick and heavy mm-hmm. like this kind of setup. You yeah. sleep like a baby in a little, in a bag like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I run two sleeping bags. I run a light summer bag and a zero degree bag. I ne- you never have to take them out. We we sell these utility bags that we throw into that have you know toothpaste. I I get to wear contacts. It has solution contacts in there. Yeah. So I'm not like oh darn, where's my I, stuff? Yeah, I don't have your it's toothbrush. Always in there. Kind of your little run and yeah. gun sack is right yeah. there. I like simple because when I get back to a truck after a long hike mm-hmm. out where we pack meat out and it's like middle of the night now, it's it's a pain in the rear to blow up your pad, get your no. thing out and all that. It's, and, no, and sometimes you don't even want to set up a tent. So. No, nobody wants to get finally to where they're planning on getting to, to then spend half the day setting up camp. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you don't have to set, you don't have to unroll your bedroll right when you get there. Go do what you go fishing, like mm-hmm. go go it, scouting. At night, when you get back, it literally takes twenty four seconds to unbuckle the three buckles and get in the twenty four seconds, not thirty, <laughs> twenty four <laughs> seconds. And, you d- and I didn't say twenty five. <laughs> okay, twenty four. <laughs> Time me. And so when you get that thing out, and it's got like some poles you can put in there as well. Yeah, you can use them. That's optional. If it's hot and it's not going to be bad weather, I probably. Although we do have a new thing coming out, so I might use them more. But, I mean, I was even talking to, to Ben Shed Crazy about this the other day. I probably won't. I'll probably use the pole system um, in late season hunts or if it's rainy or, you know, yeah, stormy. Yeah. Then it's perfect. It keeps it off you. If it's cold, it creates this hot. But you can flop the thing off, off you yeah. completely. And it's just, it's sweet to be able to have all your stuff in one spot. Your buddy calls you. And you just load the thing in and go. You don't pack. So when you put like the bars over it and you sleep in it um, and you just go to bed, right? Like on a typical, let's say, September night, right. you're going to be warm? In September, I would probably do it. You've used the pole system way yeah. more than I have. He I was, giggles about it still because I it's still, so... Yeah, it's pretty cool. You think it's for sissies or you like it? <laughs> I just oh, no, think dude, it's, it is gritty. Dude. I just think it's <laughs> genius. Okay. I just lay in there and think, this, this is, is pretty awesome. cool. Yeah, it's yeah. like a little, little my own tent. It's mm-hmm. if so, I wanted to watch a video, or if I want to watch the. Green I wanted Bowling to ask or, you, Cheryl, where did the idea of this come from? Uh, me and Seth was in Wyoming, and uh, we had a wall tinned up, and we went out hunting. We come back, and there was a small hole in our tent that some squirrel or some creature had <laughs> eaten, <laughs> and so we went out the next day, awesome. and we came back, and the hole was huge so anyway we went home and i thought oh well i'll just go get it sewed up well i couldn't find anybody uh, that wanted to have their dirty tent my dirty tin in on their sewing machine <laughs> and so i couldn't get no one to fix it <laughs> and so i thought i'll just buy my own sewing machine and so that's what i did and then with a name I, like cheryl makes sense yeah yeah <laughs> Watch sewing it, cheryl, it, it goes together <laughs> but i used to go out to the book list a lot and horseback in there and it seemed we'd get there at oh 10 o'clock at night 11 uh-huh, and just yeah. let the horses out and it never failed about two o'clock in the morning you would come one of those little thunder busters and oh you'd have to pick up all your gear or crawl underneath the truck and so i thought ah oh, one of these days i'm gonna make a bed roll or the wind would come up and it'd blow mm-hmm. down so i got this sewing machine fixed my tent and i thought i'm gonna make me something that I can use and go out, and if it rains, I can just throw it over, zip it up, stay dry, keep my gear in it. And yep. So that happened like 17 years ago, and I've just been selling them word of mouth and doing okay. And everybody kept saying, "Oh, you got to get, you got to get a, a website, and get serious, and get, and get serious. serious about it because they're pretty cool and they make camping so much easier and mm-hmm. and it gets people out more." So. So for 17 years, you've just been selling them locally. Just the friends, word of mouth. Word yeah. Of mouth. Word of mouth. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I really appreciate this product is because it's just so darn redneck. It, you know, it's like. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I am proud. I am a redneck, <laughs> and I will never, ever back down from that. But I mean, it is, right? I but mean, it's, it's gritty, and I love, you know, Sawyer Peacock has said this multiple yeah. times. He's always like, it's not a gimmick. Yeah. And it, it's really not. I 
one of the reasons why one of our big thing is to make gear that lasts because yeah. we get so sick and tired. And I'm sure a lot of people well, do forking out the cash for waiters that after two times using them leak or getting, you know, some camo gear and you get the rain gear that, that costs like your child's well, college nobody's, savings. I mean, there's not a lot of stuff like that's this durable and comfortable, right? Cause, yeah. Cause you, anybody can go out and buy a baby sack. Yeah. They have ones with little tent things inside mm-hmm. that pop it up. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's there that already exists, mm-hmm. but you're not tossing that in the back of your truck. You're, no. you're not, you're, you aren't leaving your stuff in it. You don't leave your gear in a bivy sack. You take it in and out. Yeah. This, you throw whatever you want in there, roll it up and it stays in there. And you don't have to be like, Oh yeah, I've got to throw that or remember this. It's just already there. What, yeah. kind, can, what kind of foam pad is in that? We ha- It's a three-inch. It's a very dense foam pad that we have. It's it's this. It's a similar foam that they use for high-end mattresses and like memory foam kind of stuff. No, it's not memory. It's foam. not a memory foam. I went up and spent oh a half a day with a foam guy, and we used to recommend some foam, and I took a piece of that up and and he showed me this foam and said, oh, this will last a lot longer. It's a lot durable, and so. We went with with that, and so it's good stuff. And people go to, you know, like Sportsman's Warehouse, and they could pick up a piece of foam, but it's apples it's and not oranges. The same. It's not it, the same. We wanted something that that you could actually throw out, and if it's uneven or if it's rocky, that you're not going to feel mm-hmm. the rocks. And I sleep on my side, and yeah, I don't want my shoulder going to sleep, and yeah, yeah, I want something comfortable. Well, that's the problem with like your typical. Um, you know, lightweight backpacking pad. I mean, I mm-hmm. lament over this all the time. Right. It's, dude, you a, a week backpacking good. trip. I, I don't care who I you are. I just don't sleep that well. No. Not like I do in my uh, comfy bed at home. Nope. No. And but, this, but being able to bomb up to a place and then and then just in a, on a whim and then roll out the bag. And, and, and nobody wants to take down camp. Yeah. It takes about... 35 seconds you can tie me <laughs> to roll it up yeah. but, and you're done you're done how no, simple no. how wow. fast no. how easy is that That's, i'm 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 all about that and it doesn't matter the weather it doesn't matter where you end up you what just if throw snow? out and you're good your your money so your money if it's snow you've got videos if you check out their instagram mm-hmm. which uh, is, you're just canvas cutter on instagram yeah. which is where i i, I first started i've seeing, seen yeah. videos of you guys both hosing these down with a hose, but then also shoveling snow on them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, in Josh from Antler Trader and Ben, they were out shed hunting and got snowed on. And he has a video. A lot of people have mentioned that they found us through that. And Yeah. Throw snow on it. Throw water. Sawyer Peacock uh, and Steve Sorensen, they threw Sawyer. He got in it. They zipped it up and threw him in a river. <laughs> And then, and they had a bridle hooked to it. They dragged him out of the river, and it was still dry inside of it. It's, and it's made. It's made to last. It's quality. That's one we, trusting and we guarantee dude. It. I, yeah, I, I'm that sorry. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd do that. You wouldn't I, get in a body bag and get thrown in a river. No. I would because I have Houdini skills, <laughs> and I could get myself out. Uh, no, I'm, I'm slightly claustrophobic. <laughs> yeah, that the pole system would be money for you though. If you're claustrophobic, so, that's what we're doing there. I hate the light. Like, I'm a sleep alpha. We've yeah. established okay, that yeah. at Gritty Bowman. Meaning, I'm I'm very good at sleeping. And yeah. uh, it's important to me. And that means when I wake up in the morning, I want it to be long after the sun has risen in the sky. <laughs> sure. So, um, I Use need... Use the pull system. Uh, and I'll sleep in. Like, that's what I need. I need... Yeah. I need... Because th- those tents, yes. they let all that light in. Does this block light? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, full moon. Have you guys ever been out there with a full moon and yeah. it's light as day? And you can't oh, even yeah. sleep because it's just like yeah. beaming yeah. on you. Not happening. Because hmm. I don't like to wear something over my eyes. So how roomy are these? Because I actually have trouble Good sleeping question. in a mummy bag. It's too constrictive to me. Well, for sure. And I don't like to have my legs. Claustrophobic. I'm a, I don't like I'm to have... slightly claustrophobic. And there's been a few times where I get all zipped in and I wake up in the middle of the night and I forget where I'm at. And all of a sudden I can't move. And I can't get out of that mummy bag fast enough. Okay, here's the story on, on the on that. There's a friend of ours down in St. George, and he sleeps in his every night. Every night, alongside his alongside bed. the bed, <laughs> his wife sleeps in the bed, and he sleeps in his bedroll 
every night. Okay. And so he approached me like two years ago and said, hey. It's like a little kid. You got to help his, me out. Because yeah. like I get wife? claustrophobic when I zip it up. And I'm thinking, why would you zip that up in your house? <laughs> but he does, and he wanted a pull system. And I, He said his feet get claustrophobic. Too. He needs more room. My feet get claustrophobic, he says. I've got claustrophobic feet. And we're like, Who, what? Your How feet do you get have claustrophobic? claustrophobic feet? I think that your that. brain gets claustrophobic. So I put him off for like for a year, and I... He texted me last year and said, "Oh, you got to do you got to do that for me." And I thought, "No, I'm not doing that." So I accidentally ran into him at St. George at a pizza place. So then he had me. He said, <laughs> "He said I don't care what it costs me. I want to pull on that thing, and it's got to be bigger." And so I went home over Thanksgiving and messed around with it and made one bigger, and it just had one pull. And I didn't. I took it down, and he loved it. But then over Christmas, I just started messing around with the poles and. Mm-hmm. Thought, oh, it's, let's make it like a like a regular little tent. Yeah. yeah. And so that's where that sort of come about is a guy that sleeps in it every night. But to answer your bed. question, it it's seven feet long, and, and it's thirty four inches wide, and the dominator is seventeen inches deep. That's deep, like yeah. that, and that's the sidewall. Then you have the thirty four inches excess too in between those two sidewalls so you actually get several feet like we have scott young an ex-nfl lineman he uses his all the time and he fits just fine he's a large specimen of a a human (laughs) very large and we i'm glad you asked that because we've actually gotten a lot of emails and calls about you know i'm six foot three and 320 pounds will I fit? Yeah, you will. It, they're, they're large. You can fit a lot, of, a lot of stuff in it. You can fit a lot of man in it. A lot of man. And I'm like A lot Seth. of pretty man. I mm-hmm. have two, two bags in mine, and I have one of those, I don't know, Magnum ones oh my gosh, that are yeah, like 40 funny. inches wide and 90 inches, and it fits in there fine with, with just a little summer bag. So well, room's so, not an issue. So curious, like, what is a, a favorite sleeping bag to go with this system? I mean, do you guys kind of have some like whatever your favorite sleeping bag is? It works with. The, I know that's okay. Way how too diplomatic broad. was that? Yeah. Like that doesn't Thank help you. me at all. Since I don't running. buy bags that aren't backpack light, <laughs> I really don't know. I haven't bought a sleeping bag that's like this kind of style bag in forever. I. This is my problem. I, I'm running a Teton zero degree bag, and it's extremely comfortable. But I'm a hot sleeper. I don't know how you guys sleep at yeah. night, but like right now, my wife has to have all kinds of covers on, and if I have a, a thin sheet, I'm still sweating. Mm-hmm. So I can't. I usually lie on top of that with my with my like 30 degree bag over the top of me, and it's just. See, and we're just the opposite. I go out and he's cold. I'm, I'm cold. I'm freezing to death. Seth's sleeping on top, and I'm burled clear down in the 30. So sleeping bags are. That's why mm. we don't. People are so. Everybody's different. so different. Yeah. And to, to have that large of a. But people of will bags. ask, like, will my bag fit? You, I promise you, you can have a very large sleep because he does. Yeah. A very large sleeping bag. And remember, nothing, nothing's holding those sidewalls up. They, so they sag. So yeah. even though it's 30, the, the main size is 34. When it sags, it's really closer to what, like 39, 40 inches. Yeah. yeah. There's so no problem. That's pretty size. wide. So how often do you roll this out inside your truck versus on the ground? He, he uses the truck a lot. We use cots too. It's super mm-hmm. comfortable on a cot. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Just throw your cot out, throw yeah. that on it. You can fit and we, we've done it and there's posts on our Instagram page to show it, but like we, you can fit two of them in the back of the truck and it's comfortable, but sometimes he'll throw his in the back of the truck and I'll throw mine on the ground. And a lot of times we do that because first thing in the morning, that's all you have to do is just zip it up and we can jump in the front of the truck and, and go and go and then nice. just take off. And if it rains, we're still okay. You know, cool. you don't even have to take the 35, yeah, 35 seconds to roll it up. Okay. You can just go. So, question people are going to be wondering. A question I'm wondering is how much do they cost? So the Dominator is two nineteen. Dominator, dude. If that's two, not gritty, dude, two, I don't know what is. Two nineteen k. And, <laughs> and then the Niner is one ninety seven. Okay, and the so, difference so is roughly the about two hundred bucks. Yeah, same length, same width. It's just the Niner is three inches shorter on the it's sidewall. A little less canvas. Yep. Okay, and which one do you recommend for what? 
I like the dominator, but to be honest, a lot of people are like, because we're having a little thing right now where if you buy a Niner, you get a pull system for free, mm-hmm. which is, is a super sweet deal. And they're like, but I want a Niner. I promise a, a Niner is sufficient for most people, but the dominator is sweet, especially with the pull system, because it does give you a couple more inches height with the pull system. But Okay. See, and I run I the, the Niner. Niner. He runs the Niner. I run the Dominator. They both work for our various needs. <laughs> Look, I don't know if I can own a Niner if a Dominator exists. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Although, you know, it, it, it sort of there's, makes, this, there's this book out there called Ego is Ego the Enemy. Ego is the Enemy. Yeah, I've read it. Uh, yeah. Brian Holiday, I think, wrote it. But yeah. see, it's sort of like it's a this, good, Brian. good read. You should listen I to it. I feel smaller in the smaller one. <laughs> Smaller one sounds cozy. But here's a question I had. Sorry, going back to sleeping hot. So it's summer. Uh, night's out here, still like 70 degrees. Mm-hmm. How much added insulation or warmth does just the canvas cover alone add? <sighs> not not a ton. It's not, not a, a ton. ton. You, get, you get most insulation actually using the pull system because it creates a, a, a dome, which an traps air barrier. heat in. Yeah, yep. it's an air barrier. But just the canvas alone... It's not a ton. I mean, there's a little, maybe a couple degrees, w- but not enough. But I summer like this, I literally would probably just throw it off me. Or, and I've talked to a few people, I like to do this. I like to use the canvas as like the sheet or the cover. Just right. sleep on top of my back with the canvas over me. But Yep. Another question we get a lot is a lot of people like us to put a screen in it. Mm-hmm. But we found out that if you just use some bug spray and spray on the outside, that and a little bit on your sleeping bag, the mosquitoes bust. And screens off. tear. Yeah, yeah. And we want. And we something. aren't building a product that's going to give you problems. How long just... until somebody copies you and starts doing another canvas cutter? Because they're like, "Dude, this is genius. I'm going to do it." We got asked question, that today. Brian. It's a great question. I don't know. But it's when, inevitable. Yeah, it's inevitable. We just hoped that. I mean, we we already have new designs that we're going to be coming yeah. out with soon that's going to push the game a little bit more. But so far uh, from my research and obviously it's something I care about. So I've done a decent amount of research on it. There's not a bedroll or a sleeping system like it yet. Like yeah. there's bedrolls and they're neat and you're going to pay a lot for them, but you're still going to get wet in them. You're still going to have bugs or rodents getting in your gear. Right. And this is you throw it out, zip it up. Women love it. I was going to say, we, no we got a couple of bedrolls that we got at, at a, at an event we were at and they're they're pretty cool but they just they're just canvas flaps mm-hmm. they they're they're not going to keep any that's neat but i kind of wondered what it was for exactly because like, i was like okay well i could see it going on my cot in my wall tent you know with with the bag in this and then i could like eat a hamburger and ketchup over it and it keeps my bag clean <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> otherwise i didn't see and the ones you got didn't have uh, no foam pad in them. No, 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 no. It's just a it's just a canvas yeah. sack, mm-hmm. kind of. See, in, in Australia, they're huge swags, or but yeah, they still swag have bags in Australia. They still have strings and stakes and poles. It's like setting up. It's a, like an intense bivy, and yeah. that we want to be simple, mm-hmm. and it'll always be simple. Yeah, you're speaking my language and here. durable. Oh, um, my truck's like Brian's. I mean, I just keep so much gear. I'm kind of like a mini prepper almost. <laughs> and I could just see this being part of my truck, and it's oh, yeah. always going to be in there. In yeah, fact, yeah. Jason from Drop Drop Fly, as we were out fishing the other day, we, we took a four-hour drive to where we wanted to go fish. Well, we had to get up at 3 in the morning to do that, to make that drive. And we were saying to each other, Man, if we had a canvas cutter, in fact, he had one at this mm-hmm. point that you gave him, we could have driven out the night before. Just thrown out. And, yeah, just throwing them out. And I wouldn't have had to get up at 3 in the morning nope. uh, to get where we wanted to fish. Yep. Yeah, like the whole thing with um, hotels. <laughs> like, I don't like hotels for a lot of reasons. It First d- of all, it's not other, gritty, FYI. It's not gritty. That's number one. I mean, literally, Staying you have to go, hotel, and it it's kind of sissy. The people do that, <laughs> and then two, like they cost money, which 
I'm like, it's a place to sleep, to sleep, people. You're paying to sleep. And then you just don't know what somebody else has done in those sheets and that bed and if it's been And how well it's been washed. Or if it was really washed at all. You don't want to know. You just don't know. And so that's another thing. How many people have lived in that room? Thousands no, and yeah. thousands, right? Yep. And so that creeps me out. And then you got to talk to people at the front desk. And I, <laughs> who wants to do that? Because you hate to talk to people. I, usually, here's the thing: the places <laughs> I'm going to stop on a road trip are so budget focused <laughs> that the person at the front desk is not the sharpest individual oh, you've ever met. Right. Yeah, I'm bringing back memories of Ketchikan, Alaska. <laughs> and so, oh, yeah, like word. that was scary, Chad. And so I would rather, I mean. I just avoid all that. Now, if Aaron's going to pull up to the Four Seasons and get us a room, I'm not going to complain. Well, I'm not. <laughs> most of those mattresses aren't comfortable anyways. Yeah. No, I, no, they, I promise you, you the three inches of foam heaven that you'll be sleeping <laughs> on is much more comfortable. Well, Aaron and I both like, prefer sleeping outside. You know? I mean, we just yeah. like it. So but I think most people are like me. I would rather leave at 9 o'clock at night and get somewhere at midnight and go to sleep rather than have to get up at 3 in the morning yeah. to be at the lake at 6 a.m. Yep. Yeah. 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 No, it's so nice. It's that, convenient. That's the meal ticket, right? Well, there. and half yeah. the yeah. time I'm like, I don't know where I'm pulling over or where I'm sleeping. Like, yeah, and you don't I'm have like, to go I back might, to them. And it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. I'm on the road so much, and I'm like, I might be, I might pull over at three hours. I might go eight yeah. or seven. I don't, I kind of don't know how I'm feeling until the moment, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, I, sometimes I just want to get out, and then I can just pull over, climb in the back of the truck, sleep for a while, yep, and then get up and hit the road again. And I feel good. I'm a big, I'm big on sleep, on sleep. my own terms, not in a hotel. <laughs> no, and sleep's super so. important. I can't say that enough. It, it affects so much of your life and your health. Yeah, but we talked about that a lot. So, for sure. Uh, any. Last questions. Well, are words? you guys? This seems like it's going pretty well. Are you guys doing this full time now? Mm. He's retired, and so yeah, he is. I'm I'm still working, so it feels full time. When I'm not working, I'm doing this, and even when I'm working, I'm doing this <laughs> most of the time. Uh, I, yeah, I'm really passionate about this. The outdoors, hunting and fishing is like I grew up with an awesome dad that would take me hunting all the time. Like we have home video of elk crossing the road and I've got my pop gun and I'm two, you know, and I'm like, dad, can I shoot one? Nope. Can I shoot at it? You know, it, it's so much of who we are and we love it. And the outdoors nature is so healthy for mm -hmm. people. And I think a lot of people, and I, I really believe this. I think a lot of people don't spend enough time out in nature because it is, it's a hassle. Especially if you have kids, go camping yeah. with kids. And this simplifies that. If you have this and can just throw it in the car or the truck, yeah. go to where you're going, unroll it and enjoy yourself. You don't have to worry about spending all this de time setting it up. It's just, yep. it's ready when you are. And in case people missed it, Cheryl's your dad. Yeah. Yeah. Father, yeah. son, father, father son. son. Um, so where where can guys find you? Ta website Canvas Cutter at Canvas Cutter, Canvas Cutter, 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 at, at Canvas Cutter on Instagram, canvascutter.com. We're we're also on Facebook, Canvas Cutter. You if Facebook. you go to Canvas Cutter online, you'll see uh, on Instagram. You'll see their email. Email them and say Really enjoyed that podcast you did with Gritty Bowman. <laughs> Thank you for doing an awesome product <laughs> podcast. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Product yeah. podcast fifty done. <laughs> <laughs> um, All your hate mail send to Brian. Yeah, no, I I think it's cool, man, and that's why I wanted to. Uh, I, I when I started the podcast, it's it's funny. I wanted to talk to people that uh, knew things that I didn't know and and pick their brain. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to talk to people about products they invented or products that they have that I'm curious about and interested in. Those are a couple things. Like I think. And I thought, well, if I record it on a podcast, then other people can get yeah. it too. They yeah. can be privy to that conversation. If, they, if they're interested in it, they can follow it. Yep. I think people will get to know us a little 
as we go along, but I'm sort of old-fashioned. I just bought a pair of pants <laughs> that cost me a lot more than that bedroll. And about the third time I used them, the zipper went out of them, and I'm thinking. Dang. So I have a, I really want to stand behind our product. If you have a problem with it, you send me a picture. That's sort of our, we, we want to make it fair. And, and, and we know that we can, because in the 17 years he's made them and sold them by word of mouth, we're just like getting serious now. Yeah. Because he's retired, and I want, I want it. I yeah. know it's an awesome product. Yeah. I want to go with well, it. Well, and that's one thing but, I like about it. They're made, handmade, made in the USA. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know it's going to be quality. Yeah, and we we haven't had people come back and be like, oh, the zipper broke. We've never had that happen. People haven't brought it back and been like, oh, this do Like, it's yeah, terrible. somebody's put it on and it's rubbed up against their four-wheeler tire for like 25 miles and rubbed a hole through the canvas. How many but, have caught fire? None. No. I've had some. I my bro, I he started I could see a fire Aaron on a turkey his hunt. Fire. <laughs> no, Aaron he, likes he fire, and he likes because it's cold. And- I had a huge ember land, land on mine, and because it was too close to the fire that was stoking, and it didn't catch on fire. It just burns a hole. Burned a hole right there. Not my sleeping bag. Yeah, just it. And we had one guy who laid way too close to his fire, and it didn't burn the bag. It just makes the canvas. Most of the, the canvas that yeah, we have, just dries yeah, it, it out. dries it out, cracks it. Yeah. And I seen that, and he posted it, and I, I DM'd him and told him, hey, I'll send you a new one. And he said, oh, no, no, I'd use that. And he goes, I've ordered another one anyway. He had had it for one. years and years. But That's awesome. Yeah, we, we'll we stand behind our product. Well, I'm super stoked to test that out. Yep, I got a couple. Yeah. Suzanne and I are going to go in the mountains. And uh, do you have any that zip together? Dude, we get we, this, we get this all the time. Because how he awesome made, would that be? He <laughs> made one for my cousin. And uh, I posted a picture on it. Mm-hmm. And like five women DM'd like, will you make us one? Like, Because I called it the honeymooner. And will you make us? I think you called it the honeymooner. Will you make one? We've gotten... Ben wants one. Sawyer wants one. I myself want one. A double wide. Yeah. And yeah. he's got a good idea to where it will fold on top of one another so it won't be so huge. But no, they don't zip together Not currently. Yet. Not, Not yet. yet. But you, you'll have a honeymooner down yeah. the road probably. Dude, well, don't quit I want, behind I want these one. to wait for a <laughs> No, no. I, uh, I figure um, there's a lot of independent camping i do right. then there's the camping with <laughs> suzanne right his met his motto behind it all is give it a rest for one night but you know what because here's what i think though i mean you get a honeymooner and if you put those poles in it and you put a disco light up there oh, <laughs> oh dude dude no <laughs> this is going no, so no. 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 Yeah. all right we want to keep it simple fine fine <laughs> keep it simple you know have your kids at home <laughs> But we, uh, that's really cool though. So you kind of messed with that idea. Already. Yeah. He's made one and I'm not joking. So I prototype too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, a cool. lot of, we have gotten serious, you know, DMS about like, I really want one. Are you guys going to make one? And we've thought about it and he's got a really good idea. And if the demand is out there, let us know and, and maybe we'll yeah. make it work. But I don't need one. Once you, what buy, are you going to name it? Once you buy your wife the honeymoon, a cabin. The honeymooner works. It's just too good. Yeah. I, I have some other names up. I can tell you about them offline. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> My wife's not into camping anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah. cool guys. Yeah. Well, we're going to wrap up. We're going to have okay. burgers. We're going to go eat burgers and, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, hit the water too. So, I'm hungry. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Yeah, thanks appreciate so much. you coming awesome. on. We Dang. appreciate what you guys do. It's great. I'm excited. It's a good product. I, th- I think I'm gonna. Well, I'll let people know if it's good or yeah, not. Yeah, dude. Seriously, <laughs> and I, I'm not joking. I I want people to go out there, really use and abuse it, and give us feedback. Yeah. If if there's a problem with it, let us know so we can fix it. Like we don't want to make below average product so the problem is is that hasn't happened yet but cool sounds good all right stay gritty guys stay gritty guys although our native trout species are resilient fish they are facing an uphill battle historically there were 28 species of trout that lived in our waters but three of those are extinct according to trout unlimited's research 
13 of the remaining 25 species occupy less than 25% of their historic range. Six are listed as either threatened or endangered. Renowned conservationist Shane Mahoney recently said, quote, The natural resources in our country is what makes our country so great. We can have mountains and we can have streams and we can have forests. But if there's nothing living in them, they're meaningless. I agree. Let's not forget that our right to fish depends on habitat. Let's be good stewards of our fisheries and fight to protect and preserve our public lands. Our wildlife habitat depends on it.